Hello Aces, welcome back to module six, lesson 6.2. This part is part two to building up your loyal fan base. So if you haven't already, go back to the last lesson for part one. In this lesson, we're gonna be talking about the zoomed in version of crafting your whole journey. Last time we talked about phase one, which was zoomed out version, which was discovering the different stages and then identifying the goal with each stage. In this lesson, we're diving deep. We're talking about the touch points for each stage. We're talking about the problems and solutions for each of the stages, and then we're gonna evolve your journey, and then we're gonna work on the 1K fan journey transformation. So that's what we're gonna be doing. Super excited to do this for you. It's much more hands-on, and I cannot wait to dive right in. Let's go. First up, define the touch points for each stage. What does that mean? It means that each touch point is an interaction between you and your customer. You need to clearly identify each of these touch points because this leaves an impression to your customer's eyes and in their hearts. And I'm gonna get into an example on how this works so then that way you guys can understand that in the next slide. So hang tight there. Next up is this also gives an opportunity for you to craft intentful experience for your customers every single part of the journey. Because a lot of people, they they feel like it's not fair. How come our customers feel like that? How come they say, uh, say, say bad things about us? It is because they're not being mindful on how they craft that experience with their customers. Now, let me give you an example. In the awareness stage, some of the touch points might be your customers discover you from a signboard, from the internet, from friends, or even an ad. These are all touch points of how your customers interact with your brand in the awareness stage. In the re research stage, they might come and check out your website, they might check your Instagram, your TikTok, or even they come over to your restaurant to check you guys out, or they might ask their friends and family members, or they might see how other foodies talk about your restaurant. These are all touch points in, in the research stage between the interaction of you and your customers. Next up on arrival, they have to identify the place by searching the signboards. And when they arrive, they need to find the parking space, to interact with the front door staff. All these are touch points that your customers might encounter when interacting with your brand. And when they're ordering, they order through your waiter or your menu. They check you guys out. They go on Instagram once again to check out what's on your menu, what other people are saying, what they should be ordering. All these are touch points that we're talking about while waiting. They're gonna check your ambience, they're gonna check out your decor, the facilities, the washroom. Guys, this is all details, and that's why when you're looking into going to like a fine dining restaurant, every single detail is so meticulous because they pay so much attention to each of these touch points. So you see that, wow, they do invest in the details. And if you want to craft that kind of experience, you have to define all your touch points. Next up, while eating, interaction with your waiter, how is that experience like? Your food, cutlery, ambience, all those kind of stuff. While you're leaving, they might interact with your cashier to talk about different payment methods. When they're leaving a feedback, they might come to your website or on Twitter, on Facebook. All these are areas of touch points. During the last stage, customer might interact with a promotional newsletter as well. So if you are sending promotional material to your guests, this is also another touch point that you can define. So for your job, your job is to define all the touch points, no matter how small it might be, no matter who it might be, you need to identify all the different touch points for each of the stages that are in your concept. Next up, after you identify all the touch points, we're gonna identify the problems and solutions for your 1K journey. Now that you have done so, it is our job to list out the positive negative experiences that your customers might encounter and turn them into a positive for your customers. Now, let me explain a little bit more. If your customers come to your website and they feel like, oh, you know what? You didn't update the address or you didn't update the hours of operation. And it, it's a discrepancy between that website and Google, then who do they trust? Which one is right? That is a poor experience. That's a possible negative experience that your customers might have, and that's an area for improvement on your part, whether you contact Google to update your Google listing, or you go on your website and update your website's hours of operation. This 
is a really great way to, for you to identify and a great example for you to understand. Upon arrival, your customers might be struggling to find a place due to the lack of signages. What can you do if you feel like that's a potential problem if you don't have enough lighting for your signages? What do you do? You buy a light, you light this place up, or you have other decor that brightens up the place in order for people to easily find your spot. That itself is another way that you can improve your whole experience and the touch point. When ordering food, your customers might feel that the menu descriptions to be too ambiguous and end up ordering safer options. If they don't understand what you're trying to sell, then most likely they'll just go with the chicken or the steak or the fish. So it's much more likely that if you were to be able to use simple language or use language that is vivid yet easily understandable, those are another great area for you to improve your interactions with your customers. Now that you've identified all the potential problems that might occur specifically for your concept, it is in time to evolve your loyal fan, uh, fan journey. Now that we have the solutions, we have identified the problem and the touch points, it is time to transform that. No matter how small, how complex the process is, we need to be intentional for each step and in each interaction in order for us to craft that stellar experience for your customers. After we identified all these things, we need to inform all relevant parties. So for example, if we know we want to be able to change up our customer service to make sure that it's impeccable, it's super, super um, customer focused, then we need to inform all our staff, our management to ensure that everyone is on the same page. We need to implement the changes as a team. We cannot just implement it ourselves because it's a lot of items that we need to change and to uphold. That's the reason why you need to inform your staff to implement all the change. Rebuild this map that you had to begin with, identify the current map, identify the future map, and it is up to you to evolve this whole journey. So for example, tell your website developer to update the website with the value section, revise a menu so then that way when customers are seated, waitress greets the guests and describes the experience at the restaurant and what this week's special is. So these are the mini minute items that you're doing in order for you to change up that experience, to intentfully craft that experience. And that's what I want you to be able to do for your whole journey. Make sure all your reviews on Google, on Yelp, on Facebook are responded and taken care of. So then that way the customers feel like they've been heard, whether it's positive experience or negative experience, they need to feel like they have been heard. Next up is the whole transformation within each touch point of each stage. This is where you get to bake in your why, your values, and your mission statement. Be super careful when crafting and inserting this fundamentals from previous modules. This is how culture is seen in action. Previously, we talked about, hey, culture is not your logo. Culture is not customer service. It's everything that you do. We also talked about how you can create a great culture once again, having a great culture means your stated culture and your culture that you're doing in action is, is as close as possible. So when you have identified what can potentially go wrong and after you have baked in and incorporated your why, your values into each of the stage and each of the touch point, this is where your customers will see that what you state and how you deliver it is same and it's in sync and when it's in sync, that is a sign of a great culture. And it's also the reason why regular customers will turn into loyal fans of yours. Another example for you, customers might discover your restaurant from a signboard, from the internet, from friends, or an ad. Your sign might say something funny, ice cream because you drive me crazy. This is something funny, it's light, and it's also representation of your restaurant because that's just part of your values, to be light, to be friendly, and to have fun. Incorporate these values in the way you do things in order for you to showcase your values and your culture. On arrival, have to identify your place through searching through signboards, then they need to find a parking space, interact with the front door staff, and once again, if your value is customer orientated. That means that you need to have valet. That means that your front door staff will go and greet and open the door for the people who just parked. That means 
these things are intentfully crafted. Same thing when ordering, interaction with your waiter and your menu. Everything needs to be on point and everything needs to be congruent in order for you to de deliver that stellar experience for your customers. Same thing when your, your customers are waiting, they're gonna check the ambience of your location, the decor, the facility, your washrooms, how does that look? What is the feeling you want to give out to your customers? Whether it's professional, whether it's tasteful, or whether the fact that you just don't care, it is okay. You just need to commit to it and you need to make sure you are aware of each of these touch points in order for you to craft this loyal fan journey. So now it is your turn. Go into resources below, download the worksheet and start breaking down your 1K loyal fan journey. Then evolve them and transform the journey in order for you to attract that 1,000 loyal fan base. So then that way you are on your road to a seven figure business. Once again, the, uh, the resource is in the link below for you to download, follow along. In this lesson, we just covered how you're gonna execute and implement that 1K journey for loyal fans. In the next module, we're gonna be talking about positioning. How do you position your brand, your restaurant, for some explosive growth? We're gonna be talking about marketing strategies. This is a juicy part. So I'll see you guys in the next lesson.